Hello, this is Ezekiel O'Callaghan with Raptor Chatter, and we're going to be looking at the major finds and studies of February 2018 in paleontology. The Carboniferous period was dominated by large amphibians, many of which faced extinction due to the rainforest collapse that occurred at the end of the period. This collapse, however, was believed to have been the cause for the spread of many reptile and mammal ancestors during the Permian. However, a new study published this month of tetrapods across this boundary shows that reptiles had already diversified before this boundary occurred and this rainforest collapse occurred, indicating that mammal ancestors and reptile ancestors may have diversified far earlier than initially believed. Tanistrophius is one of the most unique and well-known non-dinosaurian Triassic reptiles, with its long neck being popularized as a strange quirk of evolution. One study this month, though, looked at its legs, finding that they would be best suited for rowing through water, rather than other kinds of swimming we see in more derived aquatic species. This kind of adaptation for having well-developed legs for rowing, but less developed legs for doing more advanced kinds of swimming, is something we see today in species that live somewhat amphibious lifestyles, spending part of their time on land and part of it in the water. And so it seems the long neck of Tanistrophius was used to hide its body from fish or other prey it was hunting, and then its powerful rowing legs would be able to close the distance so that it could feed on its prey. Taphonomy is the study of how something decays and fossilizes, as fossils are often found either squished or in peculiar manners. As an example, ankylosaurs and nodosaurs are often found upside down, and this has been a question to science for quite some time. A study released this month looked at the taphonomic reasons that this was the case in these species, finding that the float and bloat model works best. When one of these animals would enter the water, its hard bony plates would initially be above the waterline. However, as the decay occurred and happened more rapidly, it would cause the animal to bloat, lowering the center of gravity on it and causing it to flip more easily, where it would then settle to the bottom and become buried by sediments, preserving as a fossil for us to find. There's also a study that looked at the potential flight patterns of two ant thorning birds from the Cretaceous, and they were found to have what is called a bounding flight, something seen today and particularly visible in woodpeckers. And so while we do see this kind of flight pattern today, it would date back to at least 126 million years ago with this study. Two studies were published side by side on the newly named Chimera rachne, coming from Burmese amber. Not a true spider, this species is seen as a link between things like vinegaroons today and our modern day spiders. You may recall from a few years ago, different newscasts warning about the depletion of the ozone layer. O3, ozone, has a layer around the earth that helps to protect us from some of the most harmful UV rays, such as UVB. One study looked at fossilized pollen from the end Permian period and found that a lot of it had been sterilized in a manner consistent with an overdose of UVB radiation. This sterilization is believed to have led to widespread ecosystem collapse, and is just one more way that the Permian extinction caused the extinctions of over 90% of all marine life and over 80% of all life on land. The idea of the KPG extinction being caused by a meteor was also studied. However, not from the Chicxulub impact site 66 million years ago, but rather from somewhere that was nearly on the opposite side of the world. In the Indian Ocean, nearly opposite the Chicxulub impact crater, there was an increase in ocean magmatism 66 million years ago. And so that magmatism is an increase in the production of magma. This magmatism could influence the decan traps to erupt even more violently, adding another layer to the causes of the extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period. Finally, there was a large find of phytosaur fossils also announced. Phytosaurs were relatives of crocodilians, and this find has been considered one of the largest Triassic finds in the United States, coming from Bears Ears National Monument, or at least what used to be Bears Ears National Monuments. The find was announced February 22nd, just 20 days after cuts put in place by the Trump administration reduced the size of the park. Coming from just after the largest mass extinction in history, these finds are significant, and they have already shown signs of looting. But this can be stopped you can contact the Bureau of Land Management in support of Bears Ears National Monument and the nearby Grand Staircase Escalante Monument, but they are only accepting comments until March 19th, so this is time sensitive. So please do what you can to contact them as quickly as possible. Link below, 
please contact them. Additionally, you can support the lawsuits that have been put forth against the cuts by various wilderness organizations and by five Native American tribes who are having their ancestral lands threatened by these cuts. Please contact them or the Bureau of Land Management to protect our national parks, our public lands, and our fossil heritage. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Shorter month than usual with February, so not quite as much being discussed in this one. However, I can't overstate the importance of protecting our public lands and the national parks and monuments. It's important that we either contact our senators or representatives or contact the Bureau of Land Management at the link I provided below so that we can try and keep our public lands open for natural discovery and science. Thank you, save the planet, don't go extinct, take care.